Hello guys, this is Philip and this is my second video regarding the C-Sharp 5 Async CTP and today I'm going to talk to you about old versus new code and why the difference matters. If you haven't already, please check my previous video where I cover some of the basics regarding the C-Sharp 5 Async CTP. I want to clarify a couple of things before we begin. In my last video I talked about that async and await are new keywords in C-Sharp. This isn't entirely true. They are actually just contextual keywords. Contextual keyword is not a reserved word in C-Sharp, but it still serves a certain purpose. There are other contextual keywords in C-Sharp, such as dynamic, var, and yield, among a lot of other different contextual keywords. The other thing that I got a couple of questions about is if you mark a method as async, will it always run asynchronously? The answer to this is no. Making a method async does not mean that it will run asynchronously. It just means that it has the potential to do so. Okay, so let's start off this session and talk about how our code looked before we got async and await. So before these new contextual keywords, we had to solve the asynchronous problem in another manner. This could involve using multiple threads, using a thread pool, or using a background worker, or using the task parallel library. You would invoke your UI using a dispatcher and then run the code on your UI thread. This is a typical use case when you wanted to load something, something heavy and do a time consuming operation on a background thread and then report the result back to the UI thread. You could also use one of the, the many controls invocation methods. However, when async and await was introduced, this changed. You don't have to do it in the hard way anymore. You can adapt your code to be more readable and you will get a more maintainable solution. I will do a demonstration in a bit where I show you how you would have, would have written the old code and how you can change this to, to use the new async and await contextual keywords. Okay, so it's time for a demo. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to create an unresponsive UI where the UI freezes up when I do a time-consuming operation. Then I'm going to show a method that runs in the background using a task with continuation. And after this I'm going to show you how you return this task and wait for it in another method. Because maybe you want to use the value in the other method. And then I'm going to show you how you invoke your dispatcher and add the value from the background thread to your UI. And after this I'm going to change the application into using async and await instead of using the task parallel library. And then I'm going to show you the different codes uh, side by side and let you decide which you think looks best. Okay, so now I'm in Visual Studio and from our previous video we had two methods. Uh, the event handler for my button, uh, which is called get my data, and then I have this method here, which is going to do a time-consuming operation and calculate a number for me. And if I run the application, for those who haven't seen it already, what this does now is that it doesn't do anything at all, really. It just shows a button, and here's a list view. The purpose of this application is that when I press this button, something is going to be populated to my list view without the user interface being frozen. So the easiest case for me to, to display this is to add a, a sleep, sleep in my calculation method. So if I sleep for two seconds when I call calculate, this will simulate a time consuming operation. So if I run this, the application freezes for two seconds and then it's responsive again. Alright, so to visualize this even more, I'm going to use a helper method that I also used in my previous video that just prints something out on the window. In this case, it adds uh, an item to my list box. So imagine my calculation method here doing some time-consuming operation and in this case the value will be 10 from this calculation. So if I run this application here and press the get my data, it's going to sleep for two seconds and then add this value, it's 10, to my list view, list box. 
So I'm going to start by create a task of int. I'm going to call this my calculation task. And I am going to fire up a new task, which is mainly going to do a couple of things there. It's going to sleep for two seconds, and then it's going to return the value of 10, because that's what my time consuming operation will do. And then I'm going to ask for the result. So what I've done here is that this is going to be processed. And after that, this is going to be displayed in our list view. One thing that you should know is that when you when you ask for the result it will actually freeze up here and wait for this to finish and return something. So if I were to run this application now, the behavior would probably be exactly the same. We wait two seconds for our value to be added to our window, which is not really what we want to do. So this is where the interesting part starts. I'm going to talk to you about continuation. What we want to happen here is that once this task this task finish run, we want to continue and add this to the user interface. So you can see this these two chunks of code here as two separate things. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say that after my calculation finishes, I'm going to continue with something. And in this case, I'm going to continue with, with this. Oops, it's actually going to be a little bit easier. Uh, and if I were to run this, we would probably get a runtime exception because you cannot do cross thread invocations. So the problem here is that I'm trying to add something to my user interface when I'm not really on my UI thread. So what I need to do here is that I'm, I need to say that this action needs to be executed and invoked on my UI thread. So I do this by saying that my action, which I'm going to call add to UI, will be invoked on my appli application dispatcher. And if I run this code here, and hopefully this will be responsive, and after a couple of seconds, we would see the value is 10. So this is the behavior that we expect from a responsive application. When we press a button, we don't want the application to freeze up. We want a responsive UI, and this is the, the old way to do it. However, I'm returning null here, and I want to return a task of t of int and I don't want my calculation method to be invoking my UI. So what I want to do here is that I want to return my calculation task and I want to say I want to tell my system here to expect my calculation task. I want to I want to remove this chunk of code here. and paste it in here. So what I did here now is that I have my calculation task which will be executed here. The task is returned. We could go up here and ask if the calculation task is finished. But instead I'm going to say that when the calculation task is finished I want to run this action on my application dispatcher. So I want to evoke my UI thread and run this action on my user interface thread. And hopefully this is going to give us a responsive UI where the code is separate from the logic. So this makes the code a bit more readable, but it's still a, a lot of noise here that we don't really want. and this could be easily removed by using the async and await keyword. So what I'm going to do here now is that I'm going to copy these methods for future reference. Right. So, so what I want to do here now is that I want I want this method to be async 
because I have a task here which I want to wait for completion and after it's completed I want to add something to my UI so let's leave this this method alone for a bit and say that this is an async method and what I want to do here now is that I want to say I want to tell my system here that I expect to get a result from my calculation task and after this task it, it, after this task is finished I want to add this to my UI all right so if I run this application now we should expect the the UI to be responsive and the value to be presented here so everything I changed here was that I I marked my method here as asynchronous and instead of having a lot of a lot of noise here I just said that okay I'm I'm going to await a result here and what happens here is that what happens here is that this code is actually added to a continuation block pretty much like the block that I just had a couple of seconds ago so if you were to com compare these two this is what it would look like so this is method 1 and this is method new this is th this is the old way of doing it and this is the newer way okay so I'm gonna show you whether or not my task runs in a separate thread or not and I'm just gonna add some debugging information so that we can see where we are when right so what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna use the, the debugger write line to add get my data and I'm going to pass in my current thread ID and I'm going to add this on a couple of places Get my data after after calculation task or rather before wait await has finished so what's going to happen here is that when I enter my get data method it's going to print out get my data and then it's going to go into my calculation task and giving back a task which is which has hopefully been started and being processed and then it's going to write out before await and then it's going to wait for two seconds and then it's going to print out await finished and then it's going to print out method finished so I'm just going to add uh, which thread I'm at when I'm in the calculation task and I'm going to say that I'm calculating so if I run this application and if we look at the debug window here you see that it's gonna say that my get my data current thread is 10 and then it's before await so it went into my calculation task and then it's before await and then it's actually inside calculating and when the calculation has finished it says await finished and then method finished so if I just remove these bits and pieces here and I want to show you how this evolved from being an a, respons a responsive application using the task parallel library to a more readable responsive application using the async and await keyword 
So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to show you how this evolved from being an, a responsive application into being a more readable responsive application. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to paste in the previous solution here. There are less lines in the async version of this code and in my opinion it's easier to read this this code here and you know that everything after the await keyword will be processed once this task has finished. You could also do something like this that if I were to remove this you could ask for the result up here and remove this and this would actually wait for the value of the calculation task and frees up the UI thread. So, so that's exactly what I did the first time when I show you, showed you down here that I could ask for the, the result of the calculation task but that's not really what I want to do. So to sum this up a bit it's really easy to change your application if you're using the task parallel library it's really easy to convert this into using the the C sharp 5 async CTP. However, if you are using uh, something like the background worker, it's probably going to be a bit more, more code that you had to write here. So I could actually show you an example of that. Let's say that let's say that you have your calculation task or your, your let's say that you have your calculation method here and your calculation method will maybe we'll fire up a background worker and when you do when you let's see here sleep thousand What I'm going to do here is that, what I have here is that I have a background worker. This background worker will fire off and I will tell it to run my, my do work hand event handler down here. And this event handler will do exactly the same thing that my, my previous delegation method did here. So I'm going to copy and paste my action in here and my action is going to add my result of 10 into my user interface. The reason that I'm not able to run add data to UI directly in my event handler here is because this is probably running on another thread, you know, because this is the background worker. So if I were to convert this into using the C Sharp 5 async CTP, I would probably start off by changing the method signature of my event handler First of all, I would remove the background worker because what I expect here is that I want to do some work. So I would probably rename this to int do work. And since I want to sleep here for two seconds, I would probably have to convert this into a task. And for the time being, I'm going to return null. And the only thing that I need here is this part. So I'm going, like, I'm going to remove the other things here. So, so for this to look like the actual method that I want to run. Oops. Uh, for this to actually look like the method I want to run here, I need to to nest this into a task of int and do factory start new and do something like this. All right, so what I have here now is that I have my do work task. So what happened here now is that I changed this into using a, a task instead of my background worker and then I'm expecting my do work task here, which is going to return a task of int, and the rest of it is is um, almost exactly as I showed before in my old example, 
except that this is now my calculate task. So what I could do here is that I could probably just remove my calculate task, rename this to calculate, and then do calculation task is equal to that, and do and mark this as async, and say that I want to wait for the result, await my calculation task result, and then I want to add my result to the UI. So if I run this application, I hope that I'm going to see the exact same behavior as I did before. I have a responsive UI, and the value is still 10. So I hope you guys saw that it's quite easy to convert your your old applications that has this noisy old code that you just want maintainable again. You can change this into using the C Sharp 5 Async CTP really easily. All right. So this is it for my demo. And thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something new. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me and stay tuned for more .NET videos.